In this video, we are going to look at React Router, what it is, how it works, and how we can use it in our application. React Router, without stating the obvious, is a routing library for React. And this means that when you have your application, it will feel much more like a single page application. And what this means is that when you click from one page to another, your application will flow nicely. So it won't reload everything in the page. So you won't reload the navigation bar, for example. You'll just reload the content that is gonna be new. And obviously with React, the way you would do this is you just render a new component. And this gives a really nice user experience and a really nice smooth flow. I'm sure you've been on websites before and when you click around, it jumps about and it feels sluggish and slow because every page has to reload completely. Well, React and React Router solve this problem. So on this slide here, I have firstly, the code that we're gonna write for React Router. And I'll explain that later on. But I also have a table. And this table explains kind of how and what the result of using React Router is. So we have our URL, so codewithtim.com. And then we have the corresponding component. So in the case of when a user goes to codewithtim.com forward slash, so the root of that website, React Router will say render the app component when a user hits that URL. However, if they go to codewithtim.com forward slash home, we want them to get the home component. The same with codewithtim.com forward slash users, we want them to get the users component. And that's the component we've just built, that list of users. And then if you, for example, click on a user, you want to go to that users profile. So you'll go to codewithtim.com forward slash user and then that semicolon Tim is a URL parameter. So that's just saying, go to users and then go to the user Tim. And then we'll render out our React user profile component. So if you look at the code at the top, it should look fairly familiar. It's just some JSX. And you can see we've got a, a router component and we're passing in some, some props called history. And we'll get onto that later. What should be most interesting for you at this stage is the root components. So the nested components under router. And you can see there we've got a root component and then we have a path and then a component prop. So we've got a path prop and a component prop. Now you should be able to see the mapping between our table and that JSX. So we obviously say the path we want to go and then the component we want to render when we get to that path. And the way that React Router does this is it uses this.props.children. So obviously you're passing in a component as a prop and React Router is gonna simply render out that component for us and make our URL nice. And we'll obviously see how that works when we start using React Router. So before we go ahead and use React Router, I just wanna go ahead and create essentially a fake React Router, a really simple version so we can see how it works and how it uses this.props.children as I mentioned earlier. So just in our users.js file, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new class component called link. And that name will be familiar in the future. So remember that. And it's gonna be a React component, obviously. Let's just have a render function and let's just return Let's just return a div for the moment. Okay. So in this component, we're gonna have a function to change our URL. So let's go ahead and create that function. So change URL. And this function is simply going to use the window object, which is your browser, the location of that object, and then it's gonna replace. So in other words, the location is the URL and it's gonna replace that URL with this dot props dot new URL. And of course, because this is a class component, we need to have a constructor. 
So I'm just gonna copy that over there to make things easier. And with our class component, I'm just gonna add in a button. And this button is simply gonna have an on click of this dot change URL, which of course we need to bind to the component. So this dot change URL equals this dot change URL dot bind to this. Okay. Let's close off this component. Let's give it some text. So let's say go to and then let's use some ES6 interpolation. This dot props dot new URL. Might look a bit funny because of the styling for this one, but no need to worry about that. And we'll give this a class name of btn btn dash blue. And then within this div, we're going to have this dot props dot children. Now, if you remember earlier, I mentioned that React Router uses this dot props dot children to render components. And if you remember, we had that JSX and we had a router component, which had a child of root, and then that root had various root children. And we'll see how that gets used with our link component. With our link component basically complete, let's use that component in our users component, just so we can see how it works and it will give us a really good insight into how React Router works and give you a better understanding. In our users component, let's render this link component. And I'm not going to close off as a self-closing tag. Now, in the component, I'm going to pass in a prop of new URL, and I'm going to make that new URL equal www.codewithtim.com. And then within this URL, I am simply going to render out a, I don't know, uh, a paragraph with saying, go to codewithtim.com. So let's think about what's going on here. We've got a link component that we've created up here. And within that component, we're passing in a new URL as a property. Within this component, we are then passing in a child paragraph to our link component. It's a child of our link component. So when this gets rendered, what's going to happen? Well, we're going to get a div, we're going to get a button, and we're also going to get the children of our props. So our props are going to have this child in it, and that child is going to get rendered out here. That's theory anyway. So let's save open up our application, refresh. Okay, so we've got a button there, which the styling's messed up a little bit, don't worry about it. So you can see here, we've got the button and we've got the child component. So before we even click that button, let's just work out what's happened. This is our paragraph tag that's been rendered as a child of our link component, which has the button. So you can see that when we have a component that has a component or a child or paragraph, HTML, whatever, embedded in it as a child of it, if you use this.prop.children, it will be rendered out. So remember that and think about how React Router is going to use this. And it'll make a lot of sense when we actually come to use React Router. So now if we go ahead and click go to codewithtim.com, we actually get cannot get www.codewithtim.com. And that's probably because I have missed out the HTTP, kind of forward slash forward slash. Let's see if that fixes that one. So refresh. And there we go. So we go to codewithtim.com and you can see the course and the Redux course as well. So that's, in theory, how React Router is going to work. It's going to have this.props.children, and it's going to render any children that are passed to the link component. And we can actually have as many children as we like here. So for example, this could be Google, and this could be Udemy. Save that, and just refresh to show you that no matter how many children you pass, 
they will all get rendered out as long as you have this.props.children. So in the next video, we're going to go and actually use React Router into our user's application. And we're going to go ahead and create a home component that's just going to have a title on it. And we're going to go ahead and create a simple user profile page that will display some more information about the users. But the main thing we're going to focus on is how we use React Router and what it actually gives us and the things that you need to know about using React Router. But once you understand how our link component works, it's going to make a lot of sense and it's going to be actually really, really easy for you to use. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.